Okay. What, what to do? What to do? I was going to say, Chris is about to jump out of his seat if we don't start looking <laughs> He's around. He's vibrating back there. <laughs> no, no, I'm fine. I think it's going to continue for a while. But I have to admit, um, the size of these Coraliids, I've only seen that one other place, and that was in the Musician Seamounts north of the Hawaiian chain. It's pretty amazing. And it's, it's extraordinary. And also, you might expect a complete transition from these to bamboo corals if it's similar to the musicians as we progress along this ridge, but maybe not. Good choice. Anyway, um, this is what I was hoping, and maybe we're getting better at this game, trying to find these things. But I think for now, this just to let the viewers know, this poses a problem as well, and the problem is that there's not a whole lot of places to set down <laughs> The, so we're going to have to find, hopefully, a clear area because this is so dense and these colonies are so spectacular that we have to be extremely careful. So what I would suggest is um, let's go ahead and uh, sort of start a transect. Um, forget about rocks because I think this is impossible to collect a rock right now until we find a clear area. And uh, just take a look and just uh, enjoy this amazing nope. scene. All right, so how many of these whip corals right now? If you had to count that, I would go 30 maybe? Maybe even more than that. 47. 47. 63. Oh, wow. <laughs> See, this is difficult, but it is really, and the idea is that Deep Sea Coral Program, that it's operated, it's, it's run by Dr. Thomas Hurrigan. Tom Hurrigan is probably watching right now. He will know that this site has thousands upon thousands of these of these animals, and that's what's so important. Mm -hmm. It's not that it has 1,003 versus 1,027. It's, it's that there's thousands here. Yeah, these big primnoid colonies, I think these are uh, it's a, a few Give me a more species of primnoids here. Uh, but I think the, the larger ones right in front of us are Paracalyptrophora. Uh, have uh, only been able to get a polyps open view of them. But that's my suspicion. There's another one of those yellow features. But there's also some number of um, branch bamboo corals. Um, I've seen some black corals as well. Bathypathies is here. Uh, zoanthids are quite common, actually. You can see a couple different types of zoanthids. This mustard brown zoanthid, um, and then on the nine o'clock position, we have these primnoid colonies covered with zoanthids, uh, different species of zoanthid as well. Those look to be growing over in colonies of Norella. Seems like a really popular spot. Yeah. Ooh. Nice. Oh my gosh, what is that, Chris? This is Victor Gorgia. I've got Victor more Gorgia. zoom as well now. These are really beautiful down here. They're always all purple. This is particularly purple, so it may be a so slightly different species, but, um, and it was named after Victor, I gather. <laughs> Primnoids or whatever they are. Huh. That's quite the balancing act. Yeah. 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 Too, too big for this ride. Seems to be, uh, yeah, you can see the stomach fully averted there. Yeah. Looks dark, darker red. Uh, this is a uh, Prisogorgia colony with uh, Hipposteria. Uh, Hipposteria, Hipposteria is the name of the sea star. Oh, why there, please? We saw some Hipposteria a bit earlier feeding on uh, a different coral colony. I think it was. Uh, oh, it might have also been a Chrysogorgia. No. And a reminder to those who are relatively new to joining us watching Nautilus Live, and you see these red brittle stars attached to the corals, and you may be think, thinking they're eating the coral, but they're not. They're just using the coral as structure to get up into the flow of water to filter out particles. Looks like it's internodal. Yeah, it looks like... Um yeah, just above the node in yeah. most cases. Um, this yellow coloration is characteristic of a, uh, a clade called S1, uh, which we've seen these on other dives. We've seen a 
pretty dense gardens of these um, on previous expeditions, most notably with the Okeanos Explorer. Uh, there was quite a dense garden in the Jarvis Island area of these S1s. Yeah, so back into the precious corals again. They're uh, extremely dense in parts of the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, it's a shame for our geologist friends because they can barely see the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's really stunning. Very cool. Yeah, that's incredibly high density on this uh, little high here. There's a ton of anemones too, these small ring anemones on the um, coral colonies. There's you know, usually Definitely at least three or four. There. This layering yeah. here, multiple. Is this? These are different colonies? E uh, yeah, yeah. Stacked in a row. They wow. are. Well. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Whoa, look at that. Oh, wow. Whoa. Maybe this place was like, hey, you think you're turning around? <laughs> you're not turning <laughs> around yet. We got a little something, something for you. Thanks. This one also there has those brittle stars. Mm -hmm. Small. The lasers are 10 centimeter, 10 centimeters apart, so we use them to estimate the size of these organisms. They say at least a meter across. Hmm. There it is. There it is. Wow. Well, hello oh. there. Squat lobsters. Okay, let's move south 10 meters, please. Wow, that's an interesting colony. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, lots of associates. Lots of associates. Okay, and they're all right there, zoom. just in that one little spot, but with separate, separate individuals. Awesome. Soft corals. Soft corals at the base. Maybe uh, some more of the stoloniferous coral here. It certainly is a diverse, tiny little spot. With a lovely bamboo coral in the background. Right. 